Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz, and I'd like to welcome you to the worship service for this, the third Sunday of Easter, here at Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church in Aurora, Illinois. The theme for our service and sermon this morning is Times of Refreshing. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Our opening song is, O Come to the Altar. Bear your cross as you wait for the crowd 
We confess our sins. O oh Lord, even in the best of times, our fallen world can sap our strength, weary our bones, and plague our souls. And these are not the best of times. We are sorry for all our sins and failures. Our wilderness wanderings and doubt created a debt we could never pay. Forgive us for Jesus' sake who has buried us through baptism into his death, so that by his grace, this mortal life is not the end for us. The washing of regeneration and renewal graces us daily, calls us to worship you weekly, and points hopefully to the superabundant time of refreshing when all who repent and trust in you will rise perfectly renewed body and soul to live with you eternally Revive us, O Lord. Amen. On the basis of this, your confession, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by joining in the song, All That I Need. The psalmist praises the God of promise and fulfillment for the relief of distress which points toward the ultimate eternal peace and safety through what Messiah has accomplished. Peter calls even our direct murderous representatives to repentance and renewal, offering restoration by God's grace to sinners like us. First John illustrates God's love for us calling all who repent of our sins, which killed his only begotten son, his children. That love empowers us to struggle with our sinful nature. St. Luke's Gospel shows the power of Jesus' resurrection and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Our first lesson is Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. 
but you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness, Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see me. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy, they were marveling. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please join me as we praise God and sing above all.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning we focus on times of refreshing as shared with us by St. Peter and recorded by St. Luke in the book of Acts. This has been quite a year and I apologize for repeating that several times this past year, but it does bear repeating. Whether you are young or old, you have been challenged through the COVID lockdown and COVID cabin fever, and perhaps economic challenges that have come your way, travel bans, travel restrictions, and all of those challenges mount up and have had a withering and desiccating impact on pretty much everybody, no matter what your economic strata, no matter what your position in society, these have been difficult and challenging times. I was visiting with a woman who had survived both the Great Depression and World War II and she mentioned that there is a certain tempering of the human spirit that undergoes such great challenges and is able to endure. And whether you are of the age and group and variety of people who have survived those great challenges of the past, whether you are some of the new young people who are being seriously challenged and developing discipline and strength, humanly speaking, by undergoing the challenges of life during a COVID shutdown and lockdown. One of the things that we find is that during times of the plague or great health challenges or great economic challenges, is that our human strength tends to get sapped. Now, there are, humanly speaking, a variety of things that we can do. Of course, we want to encourage and support each other as we're going through these things. But even just purely from a human point of view, there are some things that we can try to deal with the strain we may talk to somebody, and you might do this professionally with a trained psychologist or psychiatrist, but studies have found that simply talking to somebody that you care about and who cares about you can be a great relief. And sometimes simply sharing what your burden happens to be, even if the other person does not have a solution that they propose, and perhaps it even works out better if they don't propose a solution that you've already thought of and have ruled out for a number of different reasons. But if you talk with somebody who cares about you, that can help lessen your burden. Another option that is available for some is to try to take a break and to pace yourself for we are now in week 60 of two weeks to dampen the curve and if you are still running at a frenetic sprint pace rather than having settled into more of a marathon pace you will be totally exhausted and your nerves may be frayed and you may find yourself not only aggravated but perhaps even aggravating those you love. If you can get out, remember the early days of the lockdown where we are not even supposed to leave our houses. Some of us did venture around our yard or perhaps around the block while maintaining social distances just to avoid the onset of cabin fever. 
But if you can get out, not just of your house, but out of your routine, that might be, again, humanly speaking, a way that can provide some relief for you. If you can find a hobby, especially a constructive one, as a confessed and professed wood butcher, or as my wife likes to call it, highly skilled woodworker. Um, I'm not sure that I really deserve that, but um, being able to start in one place and by investing time and whatever talents you have, coming with a product at the end can be useful and even therapeutic. Serving others is a great way to get out of your routine and to take the focus off whatever your challenges happen to be as you look to help other people in their needs. That can also include mentoring people, especially if you have skills in the area of teaching and know some students that could use some human interaction in these times of remote learning and you have special expertise that not only you're willing to share but a student might be willing to receive from you as well. And then as I mentioned earlier, seeking help from professional mental health counselors and social workers. And this goes for those in the helping professions and those who are essential and who have been busily sprinting at a frantic and frenetic pace trying to help others. Seeking help for yourselves sometimes is the last thing that social workers or psychologists or sociologists or even psychiatrists might look to do. But humanly speaking, those are all some different options that can help during these withering and desiccating times as we drag our mortal bodies through this time of pandemic, this time when we desperately need refreshing over and above any human efforts and human attempts. Today we focus on the special blessing, the special refreshing that comes to us from God's Word. And as believers in Christ, we have the reminder from Dr. Martin Luther that whenever you wash your face, remember your baptism. The Bible describes baptism as the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit, a refreshing, a life-giving burial of our mortal bodies into Christ's crucified body, and a reception by the faith that he gives to us to receive all that his cross has done for us. As we continue this wilderness wandering through these times which can be very taxing and even painful, we have the presence of God's Holy Spirit. And as we remember all of the great blessings that this gracious washing of regeneration and renewal has done for us, we are refreshed each and every time we do it. So remember the blessings that God has provided for you in your baptism. In the Lord's Supper, as we receive Christ's real body and real blood, in this real holy supper that he instituted, and we take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for us, for the forgiveness of our sins, and as we drink his blood shed for us, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins, we are renewed, we are restored. As we hear God's word of absolution, throughout the text we have the call to repent and trust in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And as we 
have been commanded by our Lord, we gather together and we do not forsake the habit of meeting together. Some people are unable to return to corporate worship in person because of their health concerns. And we still have the opportunity through this means, confess your sins unto God and receive absolution for the members of our church or those who visit in the Aurora, Illinois area who would like an appointment, call me and I will visit you in person and remain socially distant and masked as you like me to be. And you can have private confession and absolution. And that can be a very comforting, refreshing and renewing option for those who need to hear God's word of gospel, forgiveness for Christ's sake, applied to them in a very personal way. The gospel spoken by brothers and sisters in Christ, either virtually or in person, is refreshing and renewing. We have God's command to remember the Sabbath day, a time of pulling ourselves out of the ordinary and the mundane and focusing on what he has done for us. The Old Testament people looked forward to what the Messiah would do when he came, and we as New Testament believers have a Sabbath rest in Christ, and the New Testament church, as we hear from the Gospel today, was so impressed with the resurrection of Jesus Christ that it changed the disciples' lives. It put their trajectory no longer to focus on themselves and their own needs marching through this weary world, but instead to focus on the risen Christ and his command that repentance and forgiveness should be preached in his name to all nations. We have the assurance of the empty cross. We have the assurance of the empty tomb. We have those renewing and refreshing symbols crystallizing the gospel for us and pointing us not to, oh, an iffy future of what's going to happen, but one of the things that the COVID pandemic has done for us is bring a very heightened awareness to every single one of us that these mortal bodies of ours are going to give out at some time. And the empty cross and the empty tomb and Christ's gospel gives us the absolute certainty that we will rise again to live not in desiccated, withered, shriveled, old, dying bodies, but we will live before him, body and soul, perfectly revived, perfectly renewed, perfectly refreshed through the power of his Holy Spirit. We praise God for the small and timely glimpses of refreshing and renewal that we get as we focus on his grace present in our baptism, in the Lord's Supper, in regular worship, whether in person or virtually, through the comfort and consolation of the brethren, through the symbols of Christ's victory over sin, death, and the devil, the cross, and the empty tomb, and the means of grace as we remember Christ's washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit in our baptism, and his feeding us his real body and blood in the Holy Supper. Times of refreshing are at hand every time God empowers us to trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ as we focus on his means of grace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we confess the faith that saves in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. O oh, Almighty God, our fallen world can be a tiresome, wearying mess which we have no strength to overcome on our own. We praise you for sending the exact Savior we need and ask for your grace to sustain us. Help us look for it and receive it where you have promised it will be in Sabbath worship, the objective, true, holy washing of regeneration and renewal that is real baptism, the Holy Supper, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ as it is spoken to comfort and console burdened consciences as it is written in faithful translations of your word, and as it is sung in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Fill us with your righteousness that we may share Christ's call to repentance and faith with all nations, including our own. Lead your church on earth to rise up and help solve the sin problems, racism, greed, lawlessness, murder, violence, theft, covetousness, laziness, which plague our land and our world. Purify us and empower us to practice true righteousness. Protect the world from Islamic extremism and anti-Christian bigotry. Give our president, Congress, state and local leaders sanctified common sense to rule according to your will in these dangerous times. In the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. <laughs>